Hi and welcome to the Dice Club. My name's Steve and today I'm going to show you how to play a small little filler called Dead Man's Draw. It's a push your luck game where you're going to be turning cards from this deck, performing different abilities, um, trying to score as many points as possible before the deck runs out. To set up a game of Dead Man's Draw you're going to take uh, all of the lowest cards of each of the suits out. So I've taken nine of the twos out plus the Mermaid 4. I'll get on to why the Mermaid 4 is slightly different as I talk about the suits, but you're going to remove them from the main deck and that's going to be your discard pile. There are certain cards that you're going to draw that will allow you to manipulate cards in the discard pile. And when it's your turn you're going to take the deck and you're going to reveal as many cards as you want. You can choose when to stop and you're going to perform the ability on each card as you turn it. So I would turn that card over, if that card had an ability it's a chest, I would perform that ability and I would keep going performing the abilities of each card until I hit two cards of the same suit. Here I've hit two maps, as soon as you hit two cards of the same suit you bust and you lose all of them. If I decided to stop before I drew that map I can stop here and I can bank the cards I currently have. I will take these cards and I will put them into my personal supply here. This will be considered my bank. At the end of the game you're going to score the highest valued card of each suit you have. So if I manage to get two maps, if I had the five map and the four map, I would only score five points. However, if this was either destroyed by someone else or nicked by someone else or for whatever reason and I lost that, I would still have the four map underneath it which would score me four points. At the end of the game, if I stop now and this is what I had at the end, I'd have eight, 13, 19 points and that would be my final score. Each person would score their hand and whoever's got the highest score will be the winner. But the aim of the game now the, the skill in the game is more about what the cards do. So I'll have a quick rundown of what each card does when it's your turn to play. There are ten different suits in the game and as you can see before me is a little crib sheet. It tells you specifically when you turn each suit over what it does. It tells you what the anchor does, the hook does, the cannon does and on the other side it has the other five suits too. I'm just going to quickly run through what each of these does um, but I'm just going to move this out to one side so you can see the cards as I'm going. OK, so let's say it's my turn in Dead Man's Draw. I'm just going to go through this deck and show you each of the cards and I'll describe them as they're going as to what's going to happen. Uh, the first card I'm going to draw over is an Oracle. Whenever you get an Oracle it allows you to look the next card on the pile without playing it so I could look what it is. Oh, that's not going to bust me. And then I can put it back down and decide whether I want to play it or not. When you draw a sword, you are allowed to steal one card from someone else's bank that doesn't match any in your row and doesn't match any you already have. So this allows you to take something you have yet to get and perform the ability with the card you take. The mermaid does nothing apart from the mermaid to score you more points. As I said earlier, I took all the twos out and the four mermaid. That's because in most suits they go from two to seven, in the mermaids they go from four to nine. So the highest valued card in the game is the mermaid nine. An anchor allows me to protect cards that I've already pulled out. So if I pulled out an anchor here, it would protect all the cards before the anchor. So if I manage to, there you go, I've bust. If I bust now, I would only lose the bust card and the anchor, but everything before the anchor would be safe. That's what the anchor does. A hook allows me to bring a card from my hand back into the middle, again as long as it doesn't bust me. I could, before, I could bring the cannon up or I could bring the map up but I wouldn't be allowed to bring the sword up because that would bust me. A card I bring into the middle, I again get to perform the ability of that card. A key does nothing by itself. A chest does nothing by itself but if you manage to have a key and a chest and you bank, you will get, um, if I banked now I would be getting six cards because I have six cards here that I'm going to stop, I'm going to say I'm going to take these six. If you had a key in a chest you get an additional six cards from the discard pile. Initially that's full of twos in the four, but as the game goes on and other people are busting and you're busting, all the bust cards are going to go in the discard pile. And if I was to take six from the discard pile near the end of the game I'd get some quite good cards. 
A map allows me to take the top three cards from the discard pile and keep one of them to put in the middle of my um, drawing pile. So here I've drawn these three. Well, I already have a chest, so I wouldn't take that. I could take a Kraken or I could take a Cannon. Let's say I take the Cannon and again, it's just like the hook, the card that you add to the middle, you are allowed to perform the ability. The ability of the cannon is to destroy one card from someone else's bank. It's usually going to be their best card or the top card or just a card you don't think they're going to be able to get if you destroy it. So I could use the cannon to destroy someone else's anchor or someone else's hook or whatever or just maybe their highest valued card. And the last suit we haven't seen yet, we've seen the anchor because I've discarded it, but the last suit we haven't seen is the Kraken. When you draw the Kraken, you have to draw two more cards. So in this case, it would actually bust me because there's no suit uh, apart from an anchor I haven't got. If I had to draw two more cards, I've got another cannon, I would bust and I would lose all them. I probably wouldn't have gone that far in the real game because obviously once you get past four or five, it's odds against getting something that doesn't bust you. And that's the basic game of Dead Man's Draw. It's a push your luck game, it takes just, uh, just over five minutes to play, and you often find yourself playing two or three games. You're going to play until the draw deck runs out. As soon as that runs out, you're going to stop. The person will finish their turn. Obviously, they can only draw the cards that are in the deck. And after that point, you would count the top card you have in each of your different suits, uh, add up your score, and the most points is the winner. And that's the basic game of Dead Man's Draw. However, you can extend the game by changing either the win conditions or giving each person a special ability, or both. There are six uh, different win conditions you can add at the start of the game. So you draw one of these at random, or you pick the one you want, um, and you abide by those rules, and it might change how you play the game, or indeed how you score at the end. For example, if you had this one, it would mean that all the cards you have in your bank would score, not just the best one of each suit. If you had this one here, whenever you bust the cards that go into the discard pile, they go to the player on your right. So this means if you bust, you're not just losing yourself, you're actually giving someone else quite a lot of cards. Um, this one here, if the first person past 50 points is the winner, so this is like a race game. If no one passes 50, its highest score is normal. But if someone passes 50, it doesn't matter if the draw pile still got some in, the person who gets to 50 first will be the winner. This one, every empty set you have, every, every suit you lack at the end of the game, you're going to lose five points. So this makes sure you're trying to get one of each suit. This one here, you're trying to keep your score below 60. So at the end of the game, anyone over 60 is automatically disqualified. And then it's the highest person who has a score under 60. So there might be a situation where you want to bust near the end, knowing that if you kept the cards you've got, you'd have too many. And finally, this changes what you bust on. So normally you bust if you have two of the same suit. This will mean you bust if you have two of the same rank. So if I pull a six, then a five, then a six, I've got two sixes, I would bust even if the suits didn't match. The other things you can have are you've got special traits. You've got 16 of them. I'm not going to show you them all, but I'll show you a few of them just so you can see what's going to happen. You give each person a different character. And each character... Um, behaves differently depending on the card they've got on their symbol. So for example, this person here means every mermaid he's got at the end of the game scores him an additional five points. So if it's only the top mermaid that counts, he's going to get five extra points. But if it's a different sort of win condition, this might be worth more than five. This person here, when he pulls a cannon out, he gets to discard not just one card, he gets to discard a whole suit. So basically, if you have three of a certain suit and this person brings a cannon out and he targets you, he can make you discard more than one card. This person here, it's another mermaid card. Uh, he would basically, every time you turn, turn a mermaid over, you'd bank them automatically. So mermaids, you will always get, you will never actually bust on mermaids because they'll always get banked into your supply. This one here, whenever you turn over an oracle, normally allows you to look at one card, you're allowed to look at three, so you're allowed to look at the next three cards, which is very, very advantageous because you can decide whether you're going to bust or not, or you can see what's coming up. And finally, my favourite to have, and probably the worst one I want my opponents to not have, um, is this one here, and this affects the Kraken card. Normally, if you pull a Kraken over, you have to draw two more cards yourself. If someone else has this character, it means you have to draw four. There's nothing you can do about it, you just have to draw four. You still have to get the abilities on the cards, but you're very, very likely to bust if you draw the Kraken and it's not your first card. One other thing you can get for Dead Man's Draw is this uh, handy little playmat here. Um, it doesn't come with a base game, but you can order these online. I got mine through Kickstarter. Um, and it's just a way just to order your cards slightly more uh, easily. And if people look over, they can clearly see what you've got and what your top cards of each suit. It also has a little rundown of what each card does and has a space here for any special ability you may or may not have in the game. 
And that is Dead Man's Draw. It's a push your luck card game, it takes between 5 to 10 minutes, and you can often play two or three games in a row um, because they're very quick once you know what the cards do. I've been Steve from the Dice Cup. Thank you very much.